Okay, so, on to the next episode. Oh boy, I'm excited for this one. Oh, same here as a fighting game nerd. <laughs> yeah, because this next fight is Okuma from Street Fighter versus Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat! <laughs> that right there is why I did that. Uh, if only this was the second episode of the back half of the season, huh? Oh, if only. That would have been funny. <laughs> because Akuma was in the second episode of the series, and Shao Kahn was in the second episode of the second season. So now oh, wow. it's the champion round between these two. Because last time, Akuma fought Shang Tsung and killed all his souls. And last time, Shao Kahn absorbed and bison. Yep. And yep. honestly, like, for all the years, I looked at those fights and I was just like, I can't help but feel like they, they should be switched. Like, Akuma should have yeah, fought Shao Kahn and Bison should have fought Shang Tsung. Yeah. Mm. Also, fun little fact. Akuma is, actually has the longest gap in between appearances on the show as of right now. Waiting yeah. over 10 years since he last showed up. Yeah, he is more than due for a comeback. Especially <laughs> considering that Oni came out after his first episode anyway. True. Hmm. Which I feel like is going to be Akuma's big hype point for him. But we also got to take Shin Akuma into account as well. You honestly think other people care about Shinokuma? Well, have you played Capcom vs. SNK 2? Do you think most people have? It's one of the most respected games in the fighting game uh, community. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, and then the this also give us an updated analysis on Shao Kahn. Yes. Hmm? Especially considering MK Aftermath happened after the whole Sindel episode, oddly enough. Wait, what's NK yeah, Aftermath? The uh, DLC story mode to Mortal Kombat 11. Oh, uh, okay. It came out as like a, yeah, it's like DLC canon or something like that. Well, hmm. it, all you just need to know it just effectively uh, cut off the plot line of the reboot trilogy. Which means Mortal Kombat 12 will be slightly different. This is going to be an interesting talk, though. Right, so let's start off with the characters. Let's start with what we know of them. I say we should start off with Akuma since, well, he's been waiting ten years to get back. So, yeah, let's yeah. start off with Akuma, the uh, the most powerful character in Street Fighter. The Street Fighter yeah. final boss. Mm -hmm. He was a secret boss at one point. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember exactly what you have to do, but yeah. in the final battle with M. Bison, Akuma just shows up and one-shots him. In a weird way, Akuma kind of felt more so as, like, a, someone that, well, not like a big, big, like, bad guy, but he was just, like, a side boss kind of deal. In some sort of ways, for Ryu. Well, he was always, like, the final boss of Ryu's personal story arc. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to someone like M. Bison, it was kind of like the end goal for characters like Chun Li. Hmm. So yeah, um, um, both Alex. So, if you guys remember Ryu vs. Jin, kind of expect a little bit of the same with Akuma. And more because there is a feat they didn't really count for that, which I will get into later. Yeah. Yes, yes, we will, we will. But it's pretty much they have the same martial art style, and of course the Satsui no Hado. It's going to be a big factor for Akuma. Well, I mean, the Sasumi no yep. Hado is just... That's just how Akuma fights. He's always using the Sasumi no Hado. Yeah, there's a saying that he has low health because he likes to go all out on his opponents. Yeah, that's just gameplay and story segregation. Yeah, because, well, um, because for the added offense, they can take away the defense. It's kind of like her in Guilty Gear, for example. Chip's health bar is paper thin, but he's one of the fastest characters. In, he's the fastest character in the game. Hmm. 
But honestly, like, Akuma is just one of those bosses from video games that just became iconic for his look and just aggravating to play against him. If we were doing a death battle based on that, we'd fight Rao. And of course, uh, he's iconic for his signature move, the Raging Demon. Which kills your soul. Oh, really? Yeah, and from what I've read, it also, the damage is increased depending on the sins that the user has done. Ooh, that smells danger for Shao Kahn. Which I remember reading that, I was going, oh, good lord. Shao well, Kahn's going to what? Although characters probably... have survived it before. Like, uh... I was gonna say, also, um... M. Bison survived it, and he just needed a new body. Yeah, not only did Bison survive it, uh... Goken survived it, because he used he the power of Muno Ken to, like, separate himself from his soul. Yeah, uh, and... Gen survived it by just simply emptying his soul. Also, but... if you want to count it, Heihachi survived it in Tekken 7. That's a different Akuma. Yeah, I know, but I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Let's see what might bring us that argument. Then, of course, like I'm not I even like using it as an argument. I'm just then... mentioning it as just like, yeah, it's a thing that happened. Yeah. I was gonna say what I liked about the Raging Demon was you never really saw it until Street Fighter V happened, and then you saw a little bit of it. Oh, we're in place a cutscene where he like... just comes out of the shadow, just to like, land each punch. Yeah, Capcom yeah. was like, we can't show you what happens. It's that violent. Hmm. Oh, here's a sneak peek. Insert, insert Guru's uh, type of being too brutal to show on TV from Team Foster. Oh, but, oh I, I get what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> you just got what I was referencing to that. I yeah, but, think about that. Yeah. yeah. Raging, Raging Demon is a. Yeah, it's a, it's a move that effectively. Targets your vital air, vital like, vital like joints and that damages them and then effectively erases your soul. But as I said, as I found out, it's boosted due to the recovery the sins you've done in your lifetime, which for someone like Shao Kahn. Uh, yeah, they mentioned that before in uh, Ryu vs. Scorpion. I believe Wiz's exact quote was that it. Turns the victim's own sins against them and eradicates their soul. Think of it kind of like the penance there from Ghost Rider, only instead of him staring at you, he punches you. Yeah, that's going to be quite a big thing considering the Terracons have of like what the equivalent of like 10 times the Earth's population. Ghost Rider versus Akuma win. <laughs> Now, how about a cross Sorry. how about a Street Fighter Marvel crossover where Akuma steals the power of Ghost Rider? <laughs> Flaming hair Akuma, that'd just be hilarious. <laughs> that actually looked really fucking that awesome. <laughs> really wish that was his end in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Mm. Hey, you know what? what? If they ever continued Marvel vs. Capcom, uh Akuma vs. Thanos, but he also takes the power of Ghost Rider. I'm just going to check what Akuma's ending in uh, Marvel 3. Yeah, uh, besides the Raging Demon, as we were talking about a little bit earlier, we're also talking about Shin Akuma, which should be an interesting thing to show people who have never seen Shin Akuma. The main thing I feel that's going to be hyped up because it was in the trailer for when Season 8 returned is Oni. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, only the equivalent of Akuma really just lost it and let the Satsui know how they'll take over. Isn't that just Akuma? No, let's just say Oni. Think of it like <laughs> yeah. think of it like Hulk going World Breaker. Or in wrestling ah. terms, or Ghost oh, okay. or Ghost Rider yeah. letting Zarathos take control. Yeah. Okay, or, gotcha. watch one. Just think of it like Finn Balor turning into the demon, essentially. <laughs> That is how I'm going to describe it from now on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. The only time I've ever heard... The only time I've ever heard Finn Balor referenced is Little Karibo. Of course. Not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Send me that link after we're done. I want to see it. <laughs> oh, it's just him talking about, like, this Yu-Gi-Oh! GX episode essentially being WWE. 
because a guy who's essentially the Undertaker appears, and he's just like, the only way this could be better was if Bakora was Finn Balor. Hey, I'm gonna send you to the Shadow Realm. I'm Finn Balor. Get me oh, yeah. that episode link. I need to watch it. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you. <laughs> right, well, I'll get that done after we finish up here because that's only one. Mm. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the math is, like what it adds to Akuma, but the basic thing that people know of is that it caused the volcano to erupt, which is fun. Just by him standing there. Uh. Also, we should probably talk about Shao Kahn and how we know him. <laughs> that too, but I was also going to say, like, voice acting for both these combatants, that's going to be a real, real tough challenge for the voice actors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Billy had this idea where the guy who voiced Ganon, uh, he could probably do Shao Kahn. That would be great. At that actually would work very well. Mm. I think I, I could see that. You just need a loud, booming voice for the, the infamous quotes. You weak, pathetic fool. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Shao Kahn. Who doesn't love the one of the original Mortal Kombat bosses? Oh, oh probably oh. Raiden, but still. <laughs> oh, oh god! I remember fighting him in the uh, Mortal Kombat Two in an actual arcade machine. God, that was hell. Yeah, that's a great way to describe Shao Kahn. Like he's just basically a walking hell on earth. <laughs> He's got martial arts, a giant hammer, a bunch of weird stuff. But growing up, Shao Kahn was one of the toughest fighting game bosses in Mortal Kombat. As just like Akuma, he's so goddamn cheap. Well, that was one of the reasons they put him up against Bison. <laughs> shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle. <laughs> dive kick, dive kick. Dive kick! Oh boy. Man. This is gonna be interesting because, like we were saying, Shao Kahn was last against M. Bison. And there's there, ever since MK11, they added some stuff for Shao Kahn, which would be pretty cool to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I will just yeah, throw out something. I doubt they're gonna count, like, the whole. Uh, MK versus DC thing. I was more so thinking the power of Armageddon's the big question up in the air for him. Oh, no, I, I wouldn't care that either, because it's not a part of his uh, normal set. Yeah, it's uh, kind of just like, yeah, it's not standard by any means, and the second he gets it, Raiden resets time, so we don't really get to see him do anything with it. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, researching Shao Kahn this episode is going to be Lousy Tactician, who, oddly enough, he researched Dio, Might Guy, Master Roshi, even Goro. Ah, so he Just researched a few old... examples. Ah, so he does tend to, like, get the, the extremely old martial artist. Yeah, and, just... uh, we didn't bring it up. Oh, God, I was this. saying this as a joke in the Pro Buscast chat. Fireball! Uh, guess who's the re lead researcher for Akuma? Uh, who? Akuma. <laughs> Akuma Tata? Akuma TH. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was, I brought this at the Robuscus, and I'm like, I know who I want to research Akuma for a joke, and he's just like, okay, who, who, who then? I'm just like, Akuma. And he's just like, it's actually Akuma. <laughs> like, what? I wanted to be in the meeting where they announced that. Alright, guys. Right, and we've got, and we're going to be researching Akuma versus Shao Kahn. Akuma, you're doing Akuma. Yeah. Dude, can you imagine like how he he's going to hate himself for the next two weeks? I feel like like he's just going to be like, ugh, people are going to make fun of my name. No, I just think it's hilarious that he's voice that he's uh, researching Akuma. I wouldn't have it any other way. We were about yeah. to say voicing. That'd be hilarious though. Oh, Akuma yeah. voicing Akuma. Uh, Almost slipped up, I caught myself there. Ah, that's good. Uh, no, Lousy's gonna be researching, is the lead researcher for Shao Kahn as well. Yeah. And, then Robescus also say the Akuma researching Akuma uh, cost him working on the season finale. Yes. Yes. Honestly, given the name, I'd say that's worth it. <laughs> Just a mistake. Depends on, what, depends on what the season finale is. 
Also, it depends on how Akuma feels in general. Oh, uh, yeah, true. Mm, that as well. Man. Everyone knows Shao Kahn from his brutal fatalities, his cheap antics, and his giant fucking hammer. That's a hammer. If you thought the Thor hammer, Thor's hammer was impressive, wait till you see the Wrath hammer. I still think Mjolnir is more impressive. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather have Mjolnir rather than the Wrath hammer. To be fair, like... The Wrath Hammer is also a really cool weapon. I mean, this uh, Shao Kahn can just effortlessly throw this and gets it back. Like, how does that work? Different laws of physics in the uh, Outworld. <laughs> Maybe. But some of Shao Kahn's best stuff is defeating. I think it's Onaga. I uh, did. Then he poison did. Onaga. Yeah, he poisoned yeah. them now, not defeated them in straight combat. But considering all the other combatants in the Mortal Kombat universe, you could scale Shao Kahn to a fair amount of them. You could absolutely scale him to Raiden. Yeah. I will be calling back to that, by the way. And then, the whole thing right now is, if Shao Kahn is given the power of Armageddon, I don't uh, think he should. Stop for Shao Kahn. Yeah, but honestly, I don't yeah, think they're gonna count it. Well, we can't because it's not part of his canon moveset. set. They'll probably mention it like in post analysis and everything, though. Yeah, they'll probably mention it and just be like, "But uh, no, that will be how they end his analysis: achieving the power of Armageddon until Raiden reset time because he's a sore loser." <laughs> oh, that'd be a great callback to that episode, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it'll just be mostly Akuma's, like, normal moveset that you expect to see in his games. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, Akuma, we're on Shao Kahn. It's Shao Kahn, sorry. <laughs> God damn it, we're all making dumb Bill mistakes here. Now, Bill's not even here. God damn it, Bill, this is your Well, problem. I'm covering for him, so... That's true. Oh, yeah, that's that's fair. Honestly, though, like, Shao Kahn also has... Like, doesn't Mortal Kombat also have a good amount of the comic books that they're probably going to bring up again? Uh, so does Street Fighter. Yeah, it'll be Street interesting Fighter has well, not, just comics, uh, Mortal Kombat has those DC comics that they did for Mortal Kombat X and Pico is what I know. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be cool, Shao too, Kahn uh, did not even show up in them, from what I remember. Wait, really? No, so he didn't. scale of Shao Kahn oh, yeah, beating scaling. Total Kahn, at least. That's probably what they're going to do. Honestly, like, learning about these comics again is going to be a real treat. Like, they're they're pretty interesting comics. Hmm. I quite re I remember liking the Mortal Kombat X uh, comic uh, run. I haven't got them in my collection. And honestly, out of the... The back half so far, this is, besides Macho Man vs. Cooley Man, this is probably the biggest toss-up on who wins. Um, Yeah, because I'm actually hearing a split opinion. Yeah, I have Bill's prediction as well. Yeah, I'm hearing a uh, split opinion. A lot of people talk about how uh, Shao Kahn is going to win due to, and I quote, planet-level Kahn. Yeah, uh, I'll be totally honest, I was not even aware. Hmm. I was actually talking to someone about this earlier today. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, By right. The way, um... uh, their point as to why they don't believe it is just like, if that's a thing, why has it not been brought up before? To be fair, like, the research back with Shao Kahn was way different than it is nowadays. No, but I mean, like, scaling to people like Raiden. For other MK combatants? Yeah, like, it's especially it's uh, Johnny Cage, because they mentioned, like, oh, uh, that power that he has and how it can compete with Elder Gods. I imagine Khan is probably up there, so they could have brought that up, and then, oh, lo and behold, Cage would have probably beat Captain Falcon. Probably not. Potentially, yeah. Who knows? Uh, no, but it's better than people just go and set you on scale and go, boo. Well, Cetrion is a scary elder god, but in the story, I'm pretty sure 
Like, I don't know which fight's canny, but she lost to either Jackie Briggs or Jax. No, there is no reason why she lost the fight. Lost that fight. Right. They will. They will that stupid crown thing. Yeah. The current thing, which is actually one of the few things that you can wield the count the the feature in canon, because it's uh, Veronica's crown, which is very powerful. Hmm. Ever since the um, MK aftermath, it's been a little bit confusing so far. Uh, like yeah, what about. they're gonna give Shao Kahn and everything. Yeah. I, I will just add, like, if we're going purely off of what's been brought up in recent death battles, mm -hmm. like, just looking into that, oh boy, Akuma annihilates this fool. Oh. <laughs> Is that going to be your prediction, mate? You're going to go for well, Akuma? Well, and let me, let me just go into uh, my reasoning and all that, just, again... I'm just citing numbers from previous death battles. Okay. Okay. So, I mentioned before that Shao Kahn is pretty comparable to Raiden. And he has that... Uh, that feat where he blew up that temple, and they mentioned, given the context of the scene, it was basically a last resort, all-out attack. That was about 270 tons of TNT. Okay. Now, keep that in mind. Uh, they frequently brought up a Cabal, who I imagine Shao Kahn is probably a fair bit faster than, just to uh, give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, Cabal's, like, pairing machine gun fire is Mark II. So, those, those kinds of, of stats. Um, Akuma punching that island to death was 415 megatons of TNT. I'll probably look into that again because I think they'll look into everything they've already said and see if anything needs adjusted. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, but for speed, I didn't even think about this. Uh, there's him leaping out of orbit, which would be Mark 35, to achieve escape velocity. The bunch of the meteor. Yeah, which I'm, I'm pretty much just gonna word this uh, this way. Remember in Hayachi versus Geese that Jack that destroyed that meteor? Guess who destroyed yeah. an even bigger meteor? Akuma. 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 <laughs> so I might get to see that number. Mm. So yeah, if we're going, if all this is right, and let's say Khan is just comparable to, like, that feat that they gave Raiden. But then we've got this stuff for Akuma. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that seems uh, pretty clear to me. Although, we'd also have to discuss uh, who wins in terms of, I guess, what the versus community calls hacks. Like, the soul and mind attacks. Yeah, from what my understanding is, Akuma has, well, none of mind defenses at all. I mean, well, you, he technically has some. You could argue because he's more powerful than M. Bison, who does brainwash people. Then there might be an argument for that because, in theory, if Bison could just brainwash Akuma, why does he never do Whatever. it? Just get Akuma on his side, and then be unstoppable. And there's also the fact that Satsui no Hado is a very controlling power. It, like, takes over your mind. The fact that you can wield that in the state he's in right now shows a good level of mental control. Yeah, like, you know how Ryu goes nuts when he goes into evil Ryu? Oh, they don't call him that anymore. <laughs> he got a different name or some shit. Okay, well... It's called Kage now. Okay, well... Whatever. But... Yeah, Akuma's in that mode all the time. Yeah, also, little inter the, yeah, interesting fact about Akuma, he's actually technically holding back. He's not fighting 100%, so... That's why they, I was looking at the, the numbers, I'm like, we're going to have to boost these, aren't we? 
because Shinokuma is like his 100% uh, going all out and the only form of state to be even stronger. Yeah, but so we have like a multiplier for those. We don't actually have one in our official kind of fighter state because I don't think Kuma's that kind of person. Yeah. But he is holding back so he doesn't kill people. Yeah. But the problem Just is like we, we don't know how much he's holding back. Well, in Street Fighter 3, Oro literally ties a hand behind his back so he doesn't kill people while fighting them. And I think that guy like tosses the sun, like hits like sunlight at people for an ult super. Meanwhile, Fireball's just sitting in the back going, mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how I was with your JoJo and Helsing talk. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Of course, I was so, kind of banking on the fact it was the Akuma fight coming up because uh, at least I'd know a lot about it. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, like, I asked people, like, especially in the Robust cast, uh, chat, who they thought was next. Uh, Kira and I said Okuma, and Robuscus and Richard said Korra. Yeah, well, I mean, Korra's gonna be after this. Oh, yeah, sure about but... that. Yes. Yes. We've only got one fight we don't know of, and that has to be the season finale. Yeah. So I'm and we've thinking... got Madara versus Aizen, which will be the penultimate one. Yeah, and before that, I'm thinking Korra versus probably Ray. Yeah, that's most likely gonna be it. No. Oh. It would be an interesting what? question that I do want to talk about when that does happen. But back to Shao Kahn for a quick second here. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting thing because of how souls are treated in Mortal Kombat nowadays. Like souls are essentially treated as like a power boost. Yeah. I think the real question is going to be like how good is are actually Akuma's mental defenses against someone like Shao Kahn. It's like I'm curious if previous logic has held up over the years. Like we've talked about how the mental game for M Bison was strong, right? Mm, and it yeah. wasn't strong enough to overpower Khan. But Khan was more mentally powerful enough to overpower Bison. They didn't really talk about like who's more powerful with that. They just said yeah, Khan's no stranger to brainwashing. And going back even further, back then, Akuma was able to beat Shang Tsung by destroying all the souls that Shang Tsung had. Does that logic also still hold up today? Yes. Yeah, that's Because the, the region didn't even effectively boost in power dependent on the sins that the wielder has committed. And given how well, long bloody. Khan's been around for conquering various uh, worlds. Murdering along the way. I, I, I'd say he probably has a good few. I argue he's killed about the equivalent of 10 times the planet's population. Potentially. Yeah. And the fact so, he went behind the Elder Gods, which is considered, well, death. Oh, yeah, that too. He uh, broke the rules of Mortal Kombat to uh, invade Earth. Yeah, he can be killed. He has been killed technically twice in MK. Hmm. But then Once again. was from Shang Tsung with that crown, and the other time was from Katana. Then again, Akuma's also been defeated by Ryu. Yeah, but yeah. Ryu has, like, but. For example, Ryu is also capable of defeating Alex, who did beat Gil, who is considered to be immensely powerful. Yeah. Well, and so, and Ryu has the uh, Muno Ken, the power of nothingness. That's yeah, awesome. it's effectively the one the counter. Yeah. But Shao Kahn right. doesn't have anything like that. Hmm. The fact no. he uses souls as power is probably only something that plays into the fact that he decides who wins. Yeah. I think. We need to get predictions out of the way, especially since the lads are still in a bet. I have Bill's prediction right here. All right, what's Billy's? Yeah, so this uh, next time, hell to the goddamn yes, and Akuma for the win. Okay. That is Bill's prediction. Right. Okay. So what are Sean and Nate's predictions? Oh, by the way, uh, Fireball, this doesn't concern us. <laughs> you guys can guess for fun if you feel like yeah. it. Well, I mean, currently, Sean's the only one who's losing. I've won. 
No, you voted Wait. Alucard last time. Yeah. And he lost. I'm only losing by one point. Oh, sorry, I thought you were saying you won. Oh, no, uh. I'm losing by one. <laughs> okay. One point. Still technically so losing. Hey. hey, who will you go with? Oh, we're saving you for last, are we? No, I'll go first, actually, because... I'm going Shao Kahn. Ooh. Because... I think Shao Kahn... He's going to scale to characters who have instant teleport moves, so I think technically... I think... More times than not, he can avoid the Raging Demon anyway. Can't Akuma teleport as well? Yeah, Street Fighter characters can teleport. Yeah. I didn't help Ryu beat Scorpion, now did it? Well, to be fair, Scorpion just drags you to hell. There's not much Ryu because I don't know. Also... Without the hell boosting power, Scorpion still wins. Also, I think there's debate whether or not, like, uh, if that episode were done today, who would ultimately win, and I think... Here's the funny thing as well. Oh. I'm not the only one that's going for Shao Kahn that I know of. So is Robuscus. Well, if, if anyone were to look at the chat we had debate in this fight when it was announced, there was like, uh, what, a hundred comment thread on the server uh, that we share. Oh yeah, that was you fun to discover, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... I think that's the biggest reason why I'm going with Shao Kahn. I think he can theoretically avoid the Raging Demon, and I think the Soul Hacks are better than we're giving him credit for. I'm slightly leaning towards the at this very moment. The I mean, rule yeah. is I don't decide until the day of the fight. For me, it's going to be more interesting what exactly Oni and Shinokuma are going to add on, and if that's actually going to be enough. Well, Oni and Shinokuma are just basically like the equivalent of Super Saiyan transformations in a way for Akuma. But the thing is, we don't know a uh, multiplier number for them. That's the yeah, that's the biggest issue. We don't know that number. I would like to uh, give a guess, but uh, that's not going to be very handy in this situation. Mm. Yeah. So right. I'm going to go for Shao Kahn. I'm going to trust Robuscus' judgment. Time. I will just throw this out that this isn't like throwing shade on Brabascus or anyone by the way. Um we had one other fighting game versus fighting game fight this year. Yes, and that was Hey Hachi versus Geese. Yeah, they all went and with well, Geese. We how to... Yeah. We all went with Hey Hachi. Which I still feel accomplished for doing that. Hmm. But um I'm gonna assume that you have your prediction finalized for now. Let's see. I've also been talking to a friend who uh, pretty much has been uh, calling most of this season right initially. And by the time the episode comes out, pretty much getting uh, all of them right. So I'm. Not me, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to trust him and uh, various other things that I've come across. I'm going to say Akuma. This might also be biased because I think Akuma's just cooler and I would prefer him to win. Fair. I know Akuma might be the safer bet. At the same time, for some reason, I think there's something that Shao Kahn has that people aren't giving him enough credit for. Flashbacks to when Sean said that Alucard would win, saying that he feels like he has a chance. Ugh. <laughs> uh. So once yeah. again on this podcast, Sean goes against the other two hosts in the band. Look, if I'm digging myself a hole, I might as well dig it further, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's either going to be he's too behind on the bet, or he catches up. Or we're all tied going in the chorus episode. Yeah, which, uh, spoiler, I don't think uh, we're going to be split on that one. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah, based on what Fireball. I'm hearing. Curious to who Fireball and Kira are going to go with just for fun, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my real problem is that I don't decide until the day of the fight because sometimes, uh, like, outside like sources or sometimes just something that just happens in their life convinces me to do something. Like, for example, we... So I can also say this. I did post this in the server we shared with the podcast at, like, 6 o'clock, before I clicked play, I said, screw it, I'm switching over to Iron Man, Thanks to Motorsport for making me change my mind. Hmm. I do have a habit of like, like deciding with someone, but then I'll hear something that makes me just think, you know what? Maybe I should change my mind. I mean, I remember a mate told me something for Hulk versus Broly last year. 
it made me change from Hulk to Broly, so. <laughs> but for now, this is not uh, confirmed, but I am leaning more towards a kid. Okay. Fireball, how about you? Uh, normally, I'd wait until the actual episode to come out uh, to tell me the analysis of each character, and then I make my decision. But am I. Do, do, do I have to make my. Now? Oh. I didn't technically oh. make my bet. Um, At I least, like. Moving towards. At least, like, an initial one before, like, diving deep into it yourself. That's fair. Um. Uh. I know very little about these two characters, uh. Which was why, uh. You could, uh. I wasn't, uh, uh, talking for, throughout the whole thing. Oh, which that's is understandable. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh. But the. The stuff that I know was from, uh, uh, Death Battle, so, and based on, uh, what I know, uh, and what you guys, uh, have said, uh, I think my pick is on, uh, Kuma. TRAITOR! <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone that doesn't realize my little app and Sean just put in our little group chat, Oh no, I... Like, there's something I want to do for that. You'll see in the video. <laughs> well, really I bring it. you on to the podcast and now you betray me. <laughs> Sad <laughs> days. After I trusted you with Alucard. Sad. Well, to be fair, there were a lot of things we wouldn't know that were going to be... weren't sure on what was going to happen in the fight. That was kind of, uh... You just deciding based on that info. <laughs> Uh, that's our predictions. Right. Hey. Right. Now let's we so let's us discuss the Kuma versus Shao Kahn. I hope it. I also expect it to be a two D fight as well. I would see. Same. I'm expecting it to be sprites, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it was three D. Yeah. Uh, I think two D eh. with the hand drawn style, like how they did in Ma versus Tatsumaki, might work best. Especially for the transformations that Akuma can do into Oni. Yeah, well, that and pretty much every sprite fight uh, these days. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I do. Also, I expect Brandon to actually do the soundtrack for this one. Also, hmm. I did review with Richard on the animation, and his one request was, will this be better than Heihachi versus Geese? Well, we'll have to that wait and find one. out. Yeah, well, Heihachi <laughs> versus Geese was one of my most underrated episodes of the season. So, now that we've discussed that... Yeah, we uh, need to talk about a little something that somehow hasn't been talked about on this podcast yet. I'm surprised we haven't even done this yet. Yeah. What? And what would that be? So, Sean, we've discussed uh, uh, Kiz and Fireball's favorite, least favorite, and most wanted. My favorite, least favorite, and most wanted. Billy's favorite, least favorite, and most wanted. We never discussed yours for some reason. Because just like Bill, everyone pretends I don't exist. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, in the first podcast I ever worked on him, he only called me by editor. That's it. Oof. Well, anyway, uh, that changes today because we're finally going to talk about that. Oh, great. I'm going to put it on the spot, aren't I? Hmm. All right. Yeah, and by the way, for your most wanted, you can't say Madara versus Eisen. We all know that. Yeah, that, that's a rule. No confirmed episodes. Okay, yeah. fair. <laughs> Right. Uh, so let's just get the negative out of the way. Uh, what is your least favorite? My least favorite death battle of all time. Oddly enough, we talked about it a little bit. I would say it's Tracer versus Scout. Really? Compared to uh. the other fights that we've gotten to this point, and looking back on it, it's just like, no, it didn't, it didn't really feel loyal to Scout at all. Which, like, it was fine with Tracer. Don't get me wrong. For well, Scout, they did mention that trying to give him a lot of his weapons would kind of break his character in a way. I meant more so him just standing and jumping, shooting. Yeah, that's just him running around. That's a complaint I did see, and I can kind of, uh, I kind of absolutely yeah, understand you can that. Understand it. Yeah, he doesn't like run at all. He does run in the begin in the beginning. Yeah, but then in the actual I mean, fight, he most he's mostly just stationary. I mean, yeah, true. Yeah, for two, both characters, kind of how I expect the entire fight just been running around and shooting each other. Hmm. 
I feel like for this, like, at least for the animation, they stayed... I traced his voice acting, I thought was okay. I don't remember the name of the voice actor. Elsie Lovelock. Elsie Lovelock. Yeah, she did pretty good with Tracer. We spoke to yeah, her on Nerdbender. Uh, yeah, I was about to say we got her on Nerdbender back in the day. With Scout, I didn't really feel that like match he had back in TF2 at all. Actually, well, to be fair, Scout in TF2 is a certain magic that it's kind of hard to recreate anywhere. Oh, it's also a Boston accent, and that accent wasn't really Boston at all. Oof. Uh, also, to me. Uh, a bit of trivia for those who don't know. Uh, before the episode came out, Scout's official voice actor reached out to the crew and offered to voice Scout for the episode. The only problem was that the episode was like 99% finished by that point. Ouch. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's a little something I do like is when official voice actors do like put voice in. I don't mind doing it. They've, they've gotten that before. Yeah, Zuko's uh, voice actor came back to do the Paris' role. Yeah. But, I mean, there's also, like... Okay, obviously not counting any of the Rooster Teeth characters, aside from Caboose. Yeah. For reasons. Um, but they've also been reached out to by, like, Funimation voice actors, but Chad knows the contract, so he's just like, look, we don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> I mean, it'd be really cool to like, hear Chris Abbott is doing All Might in his death battle, but... No, uh, mm. you don't want to risk it. Yeah. Unless the character's dead. Then I think it's okay. Yeah. I can do So, I yeah, yeah. So, is that the main reason you don't like it? Is because you just feel oh, like also, Scout wasn't like, done before, justice? Before I was even, like, introduced to Overwatch, like... Seeing this did not make me want to try Overwatch, like, at all. Like, it didn't really make me interested in the character or Overwatch when I first saw Tracer and everything. Uh, to be fair, I think Overwatch 2 needs to come out before we bring the series back into Death Battle. Because hmm. if I'm not mistaken, isn't that not getting a story mode? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it'll be because yeah, it'll be nice to get these characters fleshed out a bit more before we bring them in. Because when Tracer came in, it was literally just the game and a couple of animated shorts. And the yeah. uh, comics. It, yeah, yeah, this was before all the hoo-ha came out of it. Yeah, it felt like too it. soon in that aspect, looking back on it as well. Like, that's why I really like, uh, when Widowmaker yeah, was there, it felt better. Yeah, because time. yeah, because when Tracer came out, uh, came out of death, I was like before the time where she had a comic book run, which revealed her sexuality, which caused the internet to have a meltdown, which I personally got annoyed by, because I'm like, so what? Yeah. She's getting a woman. Oh, right, Why yeah. is that such a problem? Yeah. Uh, all power to her for doing it. Dude, if if we're talking about people getting mad at characters' sexualities, oh boy, I have a... I could have a field day roasting people with that. Reminds me yeah. when they revealed Soldier 76 is gay. That meltdown was because I was like, what's the problem? Does it really matter? Yeah, exactly, yeah. They love, they love what they love. I'm not going to complain about it. Hmm. Unless they aren't real. Well, you only complain about it if the person they are loving is an amusing asshole. That's when you can complain. But not, but you can't complain about it just because they're gay. Hmm. Or bi, which I've heard people complain about. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, aside from uh, that, what else were you saying, Sean? Yeah, it just really wasn't that interesting to me. And I tried to go back on it, and I just couldn't. Like, there are some episodes I don't like, but I'll go back and rewatch them every now and then. Because a lot of times, some of the episodes I didn't like were because I was younger and stupider. But with this yeah. one, I just couldn't go back and watch it. I can see where you're coming from, just that, in fact, I think I might use that episode as an example of why being in a character with such little to work with can be a detriment to the episode's quality as a whole. Yeah, that's fair. I, I'm I, like, will this... I will add this episode is technically what made me get into Overwatch and made me a Tracer main. That's fair. No wonder I play healer a lot. <laughs> 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 
healed the squishies. But, um, yeah. There is one thing I do like about every episode of Death Battle, including this one. Uh, the fight track is the best part of this episode. Oh, yeah. yeah was pretty... That was when Torian loved to put Anarchy Reigns into fights. Oh, God. I ended up discovering the soundtrack to that game, and I love it. Yeah. I just wish I could get a CD of it. But yeah, to answer the question, Scout vs. Tracer, or Tracer vs. Scout, is my least favorite episode of Death Battle of all time. What about your most favorite? My most favorite uh, is a Season 4 episode. It okay. is Balrog versus TJ Combo. Oh, hell good yes! The good oh, one. Good pick. <laughs> Listen, oh, like, yeah. I have stated before that I don't like Street Fighter that much as a game. Oh, is that why you're going with Shao Kahn? <laughs> oh, no, here, let me get into this. After seeing Balrog in Death Battle, I'm like, you know what? This seems kind of cool. Maybe I'll give it a shot. And then I just, just decided to play and just play a more deadly and Armika at that point. Oh, okay, fair. But what I liked about that episode, besides the fact it made me like a character and re like reevaluate my judgment on a series that I wasn't that big on. And then, of course. I wasn't that familiar with, with Killer Instinct, and the TJ combo analysis was really well done. It really was. It was a massive fan of Ki. It really was. Considering the uh, muddled up continuity of the series as a whole. Here's the thing the cream of the crop of this episode it's the animation. It's dated, yeah, but I still like oh. watching it. I'm not afraid to admit that. We're in the legend. He, he made th that. Animation so good. Yeah, he also <laughs> he also incorporated like combos from each of them that fans would get, like that moment yeah. when they're just like what's essentially like a two D fighting game moment that ends with the combo breaker. Yeah, I remember seeing that and just going, "Oh, they include stuff like this. Oh, this makes this episode even better." <laughs> also, I like the fact that it was set in a boxing ring with a commentator. Yeah. That this is kind awesome. of what I expected from Macho Man vs. Ghoul It was one of the most different episodes for its time. It was so different. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of what gave it a unique charm. Yeah, it still has that charm. And especially with the voice acting, I thought it was great. I had no idea that the guy who voiced Tusk from Killer Instinct voiced Balrog for a while. Oh, yeah. Also, I think they got permission from Omega Sparks to have that music in the fight. Oh, yeah. And, uh, also, fun fact, uh, TJ's theme on Back to Rise is the last, uh, piece of music from either source material that was used in a Death Battle fight before they yeah, started doing custom for, tracks for every episode. Yeah, doing Yeah. Yeah, so that's a little interesting fun fact for those that don't know. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, but honestly, like, everything was great about this episode. The triangle theory of boxing was an interesting concept to learn about. Like, this actually was one of the closest episodes of that season as well, when you look at the stats between these two. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. I remember having a debate about this. I'm going, I'm not actually sure. I want to trust DJ, but. Uh, yeah, but I sat with my gun and I was very happy with this. Hmm. There is nothing I dislike about this episode. Everything was enjoyable. Yeah, the commentator wasn't annoying, which I found amazing. <laughs> Especially also his the line referee. Of oh, the referee. Oh, oh God, the ref. <laughs> the ref getting knocked out by Balrog. Dude, reactions to that are, from, are hilarious. <laughs> the poor wrestling fan, I was just like, Fred Bomb! <laughs> We're just waiting for... For him to pick, be picked up like Brock Lesnar to the Charles Robinson, huh? Here, <laughs> just pick him up by the waist and throw him in the ring. Yeah, like that episode will always have a special place in my heart, which is ironic considering one of the episodes that Faro had a Bleach character. But I still think this is one of the best, the best episode of Death Battle ever. That is a great pick, mm. dude. That is. It's one of the best episodes they've ever done. <laughs> oh yeah. Hmm. Which is why when I said one of my most wanted was Little Mike vs. Zippo, that's why I said 
to the TJ versus Balrog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would ha it would have to be. And speaking of most wanted, <laughs> Sean. Anyway. Aside from Mortal vs. Aizen, what is your most wanted episode? My most wanted besides Mortal vs. Aizen. It's funny we were talking about Overwatch because it is another Overwatch character. Uh, <laughs> Genji from Overwatch versus Zero from Borderlands. I've heard this. Uh, this is the first time I've heard of this one. Two. You got some of the most badass cybernetic ninja assassins in each of their universes. Ooh. Especially after Borderlands 3, they each have like a girl that people ship them with. And not to mention that their ways of thinking are kind of similar, actually. I think it would be really cool, especially for the Zero voice acting. Um, fun fact, Zero only speaks in haikus. Oh, wow. I'm not even kidding. That's one of his biggest traits, is that he always speaks in the haiku. I can already see people hating on that backboard. I don't know, I think if Death Bell actually holds true to that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. It also take off a new series into Death Bell. Yeah, because yeah. I think it, it's either... No, 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 it, it's a Mass Effect. Actually, no, it might be both The Ben said he wants to bring into Death Bell, Borderlands or Mass Effect. Yeah. Also, I have friends I that love Borderlands, so yeah, th this could be something. For a while, because of yeah, because of Borderlands Two, people were probably a little bit unsure because Zero was a playable character, but then he got featured in other games like Tales of the Borderlands and Borderlands Three, where there's a more solid baseline of what Zero's abilities and weaponry actually are. So there's actual ways to calculate some of Zero's feats and arsenal. I would be quite interested to see this, actually, because I would like to see Genji in there. Yeah. Also, this would Which... save Genji from being massacred by Raiden. Yeah, that's another big thing. Despite <laughs> uh, what people think, Genji versus Zero is a pretty close matchup, honestly. I was about to say, that sounds like a pretty close matchup, because I have some awareness of what Bodland characters are capable of. I, was, I did put them in the range of Overwatch characters. Yeah. Also, my friends who love Borderlands, we also play Overwatch together, so this would be, like, fantastic to talk yeah. about <laughs> with them. Although, Thanks. ironically, none of uh, their mains have been in Death Battle yet. <laughs> Just well, mine, and she won. Well, who did your friends main? Uh, D.Va, Reinhardt, and uh, between Mercy and Lucio. Just don't put Reinhardt against Nora is all I ask. Nora's got a better opponent. No, I, I want Reinhardt to fight Nora. That'd be awesome. And hilarious. Is it fair to Reinhardt? No. No, no, no. It's not fair, no. It's a giant man, while Nora is just... Uh, tiny compared to him. No, that doesn't matter. Nora probably wins that regardless. Yeah. Also, it'd just be one of those fights where... It, it'd be like where the combatants like, respect each other. Like, Reinhardt would like Nora's Moxie. And Nora would think he's a cool old man. True. Yeah, like. If oh, you're gonna have. Right, well, hold on. Before we continue on with that, if Nora is going to fight an Overwatch character, you're most likely going to fight Brigette. Oh, have you pronounced her name? Have I pronounced it Brigitte. I think Brigitte actually it? suggested against Jean, oddly enough. Nah, save Jean for soccer. Yeah. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. Mechanical woman who wields a hammer versus another uh, woman who wields a hammer. That'd be it's a fun fight. Technically, a morning star, but whatever. Well, morning star. Well, weapons are similar. There you go. Plus, they're two extremely powerful women. It would just be fun watching them try to just hit the crap out of each other. Mm -hmm. And from, and it'll be a bit more um, dramatic in a way. They're both uh, Scandinavian based, aren't they? But anyway, back to Sean's most wanted matchup. Yeah. That isn't Mother of Eisen. Uh, that isn't Because I'm not Eisen. allowed to talk about it until that episode comes out. <laughs> it will come. It's coming. 
John's just certainly counting down the hours. I've already have a meme prepared for the day before, okay? You, you just have to wait until after Korra of uh, uh, till Korra's episode. I so Korra know. versus whoever. But honestly, like, the, this has a lot, this is could be one of the most fun episodes in Death Battle. Probably one of the closest one as well. I wouldn't mind this being a 2D fight because I've seen a Genji sprite before I on know, the like, animation stuff. I feel like this would have to be yeah. 3D. Yeah, I mean, Genji's got a pretty decent 3D model that was used in the DBX against Raiden. Hmm. Yeah. Also, every Overwatch fight so far has been 3D. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because, well, the 3D series mostly. Yeah. It would be so cool just to see like how this will work. And I if I were to say though who I think honestly wins. I would say it's close, but I think Zero might have enough to beat Genji. Interesting. Hmm. I feel like I would because want how... Genji to win just out of familiarity. Yeah. But I mean I'm not that attached to Genji, so like whatever. I mean yeah. I must, I'm not the only one who's having his ultimate attack uh, sound clip playing in my head right now. <laughs> nah, I thought of it too. Considering yeah. how often I've heard of it. <laughs> but, it well, is, but I would say that that's my most wanted besides Madara versus Aizen. <laughs> I also thought about Cole versus it. Alex, but that's already been confirmed for years. Oh well, yeah, seriously, on that one, just when? But yeah, uh, I hope that answered your question about my most wanted. All right. I mean, good that we, we have finally like a... talked about it. <laughs> you could have like a little list, and then we can tick them off when they happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does that mean I have to make a new most wanted? Like that isn't Blake Mikasa. Yes. Yes. Oh boy, I've got to think about that. <laughs> well, we all know what Bill's is, so you just got to beat that. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, everyone watching, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, what did you think of Dia vs. Alucard? What are your predictions for Akuma vs. Shao Kahn? What do you think of the episodes that we just talked about for Sean's tastes? And hopefully Billy should be back in the next one. He's just got some uh, stuff that he's got to sort out. Yeah, it was fun covering for him while he was gone. Yeah, and let's just uh, thank Kier for uh, uh, covering for Billy. Yay! I was so happy to do so. Mm. Alright, uh, anyone want to do outros? Fireball, do you want to go first? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, again, my name is uh, Fireball. Uh, I have a YouTube and Twitch. I'm trying to uh, get those two uh, uh, going. But, uh, yeah, uh, once again, thank you guys for having me. And, uh, so yeah. Alright, I guess uh Kier next. <laughs> uh thanks for tuning in guys and once again thanks to you guys for letting me cover while Billy is doing his special Halloween project. It's been a blast. And I'm more than ready to come back uh, on again depending on a future matchup. Or if uh me or Sean can't make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be happy to sub in. Hey. Right. Uh, Sean? Thank you folks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Leave any comments down below because I like reading your comments. Check out any links that Bill has in the description. And before I end, I do want to say, again, thank you, Kier, for coming on to cover for Bill. Uh, thank you, Fireball, for coming on to talk about Deal versus Alucard. And thank you, Mate, for being able not only to host this time around, but also editing since I am currently still recovering. So that means a lot. And with that being said, thank you folks for watching, and I will see you all later. Goodbye. Bye.